welcome to Canberra for the 1999 WNBL Grand Final. Yes, welcome along to Canberra for the 1999 WNBL Grand Final. Hi everyone, Clinton Grimes along with an all-star cast with you for the Grand Final. Former Australian Opal Leanne Grantham is with us along with current Opal and arguably the biggest name in women's basketball in this country, Michelle Timms. It promises to be a wonderful game. It has been a remarkable season full of twists and turns and up and downs along the way and this afternoon we are going to crown a new WNBL champion for the last six years it has either been the Adelaide Lightning or the Sydney Flames who have prevailed when the season finishes for the WNBL today though it is the Australian Institute of Sport the youngsters who have never won the WNBL grand final up against the Perth Breakers who took the title in 1992 let's check the respective history for these two clubs as you see the AIS the only original WNBL team still in the competition. They joined the league in 1981. They've made the big game just once in 1986 where they lost to Nutawadi, 51 to 62. For a 10 year period, they didn't make the playoffs, but now riding on the back of the current team, they have been in the last three final series. Perth, on the other hand, they are a WNBL power, missing the playoffs just three times in their 11 seasons. They made the grand final in back-to-back -back years in 1992 and 1993, beating Danny Nong, but losing to Sydney by one point. As I said, Michelle Timms, you're in that side, Michelle. A big welcome to you. And also, Leanne Grantham joining us here today. Leanne, it's been a remarkable season. Lauren Jackson has been, I guess, the story of it. She's going to be a big focal point in today's grand final. She certainly is. Lauren Jackson is the talk of the town, not just uh, here in Canberra, but the talk of Australia all around. She's the MVP, winner for the WNBL this year, All-Star 5. She's a top rebounder, top shooter. Well, what else can you say about Lauren Jackson? And certainly in tonight's game, she's going to be the focal point for the Institute of Sport. I think probably uh, from Perth's point of view, what they're going to have to do is try and keep the ball out of her hands. So there's going to be a lot of backcourt work between Tully Bevilacqua and, of course, Kristen Fuel. But I'm going for the home court advantage, the AIS, by two points in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't lost here with Lauren Jackson in the lineup this season. Michelle Timms, I guess, in your keys to winning, Lauren Jackson is going to be at the forefront. Yeah, definitely. Clinton, uh, Lauren Jackson has had an exceptional season, as we know, MVP as Lee just said, but she's definitely going to be one of the key factors to winning this game here tonight. You know, she just has to have not a superstar game, just a, a, an all-round Lauren Jackson style game. Uh, secondly, I think if a mid-game slump occurs for the AIS, they have to be able to pull themselves out of it. And uh, they haven't really been tested that much. It is a final um, this year, it is a final now, so it'll be very interesting to see if they can pull themselves out if a slump occurs. And thirdly, I think for Perth's best chance is uh, little Tully Bevilacqua. If she can harass and slow the point guards down, I think she could cause them a lot of trouble with uh, the AIS. But, uh, you know, statistically and mathematically, I think uh, I have to say AIS by seven. But emotionally, definitely I'm a, I'm a breaker of old and I definitely want the breakers to try and come away with the win. OK, let's take you through the lineups now for these two sides. And we start with the home team, the AIS. Let's take you through a very good starting lineup. Kristen Veal and Desiree Globitz in the backcourt. Taylor and Jackson up front. And Susie Batkovich, the starting centre. What a season. She has had a great close to the season for the AIS. And a deep bench, 12 players for the AIS lineup. Phil Brown is the coach of the AIS team. For the Perth Breakers, Tully Bevilacqua and Narell McConnell in the backcourt. Stevenson McClure up front. Jenny Whittle the starting centre, Owens, Boyd, Cox, McLean and Clark off the bench for the team coached by Murray Tresseter. These two teams have had a wonderful history over the last 12 months. This is their last six meetings over the last 12 months. Look at this. Three of the matches have been decided in overtime. The other three games have had margins of one, five and 19 points. That 19-point game coming here in the semi-final two weeks ago. The margin, though, was just four with three minutes to go, but the AIS surged home. So it will be a wonderful grand final today. The AIS at home against the Perth Breakers. For eight members of the AIS team, this is their last game. They graduate from the AIS at a dinner here on Thursday night. They will not play together again. So emotionally, perhaps, that will play a very big factor this afternoon. On Monday night at the awards dinner in Sydney, I caught up with both coaches. Phil Brown from the AIS, who was named the WNBL Coach of the Year for a second consecutive time on Monday night. And also Murray Tresseter from the Perth Breakers. I started by asking Phil Brown about what sort of support he expects here at home at the AIS Arena for this afternoon's Grand Final. 
It's going to be huge. <laughs> it is going to be huge. It's um, the, the and not just the AIS campus, certainly all the sports and the athletes uh, at the AIS. I've never seen, I've, this is my 12th year there, and the enthusiasm around the campus is just phenomenal. Um, but also through the basketball community in Canberra and the, and the general sporting community in Canberra, I think it's just caught everyone's imagination. You know, it's 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 not just another WNBL grand final. I mean, they're all special, but I think it's caught everyone's imagination because it's a it's a bunch of 17-year-old girls. We wanted to finish in the top two. We thought we had the talent to do that last year and didn't get it done. And uh, this year, I think uh, people had a pretty fierce desire to to uh, to write that. And uh, as our season went on, we put ourselves under pressure by not playing so well on the road, but being almost unbeatable at home. And uh, so our goal was achieved in finishing top two. Uh, we would have liked to have the final at home, but you know, it's played on the, the same dimension court that we have in Perth, and uh, we'll take care of business in uh, Canberra on Saturday afternoon. So the word from Murray Tressida, the dimensions of the court are exactly the same. Covering the sidelines for us with plenty of interviews this afternoon is Simone Thurtill. She's in front of a couple of... Very excited, AIS fans. Simone, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Clinton. It's getting very exciting down here courtside. As you can see, plenty of balloons, plenty of supporters from athletes from the Institute. They've had their faces painted. They've started to do some of their cheers, as you can hear. But it's not only the AIS who are going to be supported. There's a group of about 20 or 30 people here in the crowd, and they've come all the way from Perth and some of them from Melbourne to support the Breakers this afternoon. It's going to be a great afternoon. Indeed, Simone, thanks for that. Sharon Arnold and Carolyn Gillespie have been given the honour of officiating in the grand final. The AIS in the blue uniforms to the right of screen. The Breakers in yellow to the left. Jenny Whittle against Lauren Jackson. The grand final underway. And it will be the Breakers through Narelle McConnell to control possession. Here's Bevilacqua drawing an early foul on Susie Batkovich. The Breakers off to the line. In our pregame show there, Michelle Timms, you went for the AIS by seven points. Leanne, yourself? I went. Remember, I said overtime, two points to the AIS. Okay, we just had to confirm that, Leanne. <laughs> Having said AIS, though, mathematically, statistically, but uh, heart and souls with the Breakers, I really hope they get over the line today. It'll be fantastic for Perth, that's for sure. The Breakers get the opening score just six seconds in. Tali Bavalacqua, the captain of the Breakers, makes them both, and they extend the D to start. Not surprising either, Clinton. We said in the opener that Tully would be right up the floor. Taylor on the pull-up inside. Confident start for Penny Taylor. She has had a wonderful season. Her third in the WNBL, 11.4 points per game and seven rebounds. A lot expected of her this afternoon. Batkovich knocked it away. Bevilacqua gets it back. McClure, tough shot. Taylor the rebound. Michelle, you told me off here earlier on the start. So important for the AIS to get that ascendancy early. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's such an emotional game for, for the AIS kids. You know, a lot's riding on. It's their last game as a team. So, you know, they've put a lot of pressure on themselves and they really need to get off to a nice, confident start. It's interesting to see the matchups, Clinton. We see that McClure is guarding Jackson. Oh, great dish to Bakovic. But the help out from behind from Jenny Whittle. I think that McClure is a little bit quicker, and it's good to see that McClure's got the job on Jackson with the help out behind from Jenny Whittle. But there's the problem. We see in replay, Jenny's come over to help, and then the foul's called on McConnell. A word on the season for these two. The AES won the minor premiership. 16 wins and only five defeats. They were 9-1 and one on this court. The only loss coming without Lauren Jackson in the lineup. The Breakers were second at 14-7. and seven. They are 5-6 and six on the road, winning just 5 of 11 matches away from Perth. The AOS have won their last eight consecutive matches as Jenny Whittle couldn't control the pass from Gina Stevens. The Breakers turn it over, and the AIS with a one-point lead have possession again. Vatkovic, now Taylor. From long range for three, can't get it. McConnell gets the rebound, goes to ground. Little handoff for Bevilacqua. Well, wasn't pretty, but the Breakers maintain possession. Live around Australia on ABC Sport. Stay with us for what should be a great afternoon. Foul is called on the AIS. And a great afternoon watching Jenny Whittle and, uh, and Lauren Jackson go at it too, you know. Um, super competitive athletes and... Uh, Jen's got a little bit on the high department. It's going to be really interesting watching their battle. I think it's going to be a very physical one, as we just saw then. Uh, you know, Jackson picking up a, a little foul. McConnell, McClure. This is for two from range. Couldn't get it. Rebound back to McConnell. 
Breakers can reset. She fires for three and makes it. There's someone you don't want to leave open. And there's a statement there from the Breakers. In the semi-final, they were just four of 28 on this court from beyond the three-point arc. They make their first attempt. Jackson inside, tough oh. foul. Tough foul indeed. I didn't think there was anything in that. Yeah, it was a fairly soft call, I think, from Caroline Gillespie. There may have been just a little bit of contact, but boy, not very much at all, particularly when you see the contact going on down the other end of the court. So Lauren Jackson at the line. What a night she had on Monday night. Almost had to get a truck to drive her awards <laughs> home. The MVP, the All-Star 5, leading scorer, leading rebounder, leading field goal percentage. Uh, it's, just, it's just so exciting to have a player of her calibre playing for Australia and, you know, leading up to the Olympics. It's, it's really exciting from a player's perspective and from anybody who supports basketball's perspective. And she says she has not made up her mind which WNBL team she will play for next season. Stevens and Airball. McConnell is on the rebound again. Hasn't McConnell just been invaluable for Perth this year? It's just, she's just been playing fantastic, especially towards the back half of the season. It's really stepped up offensively for them. Here she is inside, going to work against Globitz. Couldn't get it. Another offensive rebound, her third. The handoff to... Jenny Whittle, she wasn't expecting it. A bit harsh done by there. I thought she probably could have got a foul in there. Breakers by one. Taylor to Veal. Likewise, another great season. Now Globitz, the captain of the AAS side, on the drive. Good score. There was a lot of strength in that drive, Clinton. The fans have come <laughs> ready for this one, haven't they? They certainly have. It's a great turnout here in Canberra at the arena. The faces are painted, the signs have been made. Whittle over Jackson. Oh, Jennifer yes. Jennifer Whittle. <laughs> Huge basket. Great little hook shot. The lead changing hands several times already. After three minutes, Great turnover. Hands. Taylor drives into a wall. Three on two breakers. Bevel Aquita McConnell. She goes all the way. Can't make it. Stevens, the rebound. Count it. Count it. And the foul. Stevens is just so strong around the basket. You know, her upper body strength and her leg power is phenomenal. We talked about their backcourt. We see this fast break again. Very rarely do you see McConnell miss a layup, but I mean, she was under a lot of pressure. Great pickup from Gina Stevens, but those three players are going to play, play a very important role for Perth tonight. Absolutely. I think that Perth backcourt's better than the AIS backcourt, so that's going to be a really interesting one to watch as well, Leanne. Stevens can't convert the three point play. You saw her numbers on the season. Very impressive for the All Star five members. 16 and a half points per game. The Breakers lead by three play just over three minutes of the first half here in the national championship game jackson from range yes. and why not thank you very much lauren jackson made just five three-pointers all season and there's a lot of biffo going on down there with jackson mcclure she just clubbed her one in the face She'll get it back, don't worry about I mean, that. Let's face it, there's a lot of these girls, you know, they're playing for Perth who actually play at AIS, so there's a lot, lot of emotion out there on the court. Whittle stepping inside, oh. Taylor knocked it away. They are going to ride these rookies. Now the breakers, Veal pull up three. Can't make it on the long rebound. Bevilacqua crashes into Veal, she gets the foul. I Very think that's unlucky. unfortunate, absolutely. It's good to see the girls go for the ball and it would be better if there was no call there. Phil Brown off of his seat. We'll pick it up in replay, replay here. Tully dives for it. A little bit of joint contact there. I guess you're the referee sitting in the middle. Clinton. Nothing but a love tap, I say. Come on. <laughs> I would have called it. Referees have got to set the tone early. Otherwise, would have, otherwise it will become like the you WWF. You've got to have something to say. Come on, you be blowing Good. your whistle. Jackson inside. And she's pumped. She's already pumping the air, and we've only played five minutes in this game. She's got the last five points in the game to give the AIS the lead by two. It's been a roller coaster season, as I mentioned in the opener. This has been a roller coaster start, hasn't it? McLuhan now against Batkovic. Jackson with Whittle. Bevilacqua over Kristen Veal. Can't make it. Batkovic there. But that's Bevilacqua. That's why she's so tough. She runs a runs her miss shot down, nearly comes up with it. Stood on the baseline, out of play. AOS to get the basketball. This is really high standard basketball for a grand final, Michelle. I mean, usually there's a lot of nerves and a lot of turnovers, but boy, there's been some sensational moves. They just haven't messed around. They got straight into it. It's like it's the second half already. Jackson again. She has now scored the last seven points of the grand final. She has eight for the game. Bevilacqua open. Another three-point try from Tully. Again, it doesn't go. Jackson the rebound. 
Off to Globitz. Now Taylor has a look. Will she take the claw on? She does. Can't get it. Batkovic the rebound. Bevilacqua gets it. Bevilacqua, just fantastic hands. Knocked it away, created a fast break. McConnell says thank you very much. I think they need to settle down from the three-point line just quietly. Yes. Uh, time out, I'd say, coming from Murray Tressida. Would have to very shortly. Breakers go. made their first three-point try this afternoon. Have missed the last three. Oh, Bakovic oh. wasn't ready. She was setting a screen. Probably Taylor wanna, sent the basketball in her direction. Want to slow it down and get a good offensive play here. I wouldn't mind him going back into Whittle. You know, she scored her last hook shot. She got tripped up the, the shot the next attempt. So I think she's ready to score again. Whittle, McConnell. Globitz guarding him, McClure and Jackson bump bodies again inside. Stephen steps inside the three-point arc. Shot clock down to eight. Whittle against Taylor. Whittle works oh, her way job. inside. Gee, that was tough. You know, that's one area of her game that's just improved out of sight this season. She's actually putting the ball on the floor and going around players. Two years ago, Jennifer Whittle wouldn't be doing that sort of thing at all. Count it. And that's tough. She is really tough. becoming <laughs> the Lauren Jackson show. <laughs> Plenty of AIS athletes on hand. The Canberra Gunners from the ABA are here as well. They played a curtain raiser, a win over Danny Long, and Lauren Jackson is just getting it done. The foul on Stevens. What can you do? I was just going to say, Michelle, what can you do? I mean, they had McClure on her. They've got the help behind. And you've just got to totally deny it. But when she's so athletic, how do you stop her from getting that? And she's such a quality player that when you do trap her, she hits the open man, as we saw in the very first possession. Jackson has 11. Here's excitement. Cox on the court. <laughs> Six minutes played. Cox replaced McClure in that opening substitution. McClure started a little bit nervous, I thought. Yes, she did, actually. Cox had a very, very steady, very important second half of the preliminary final. Smitherum on for Globitz for the AIS. Jackson kicks that one away. The shot clock will reset. Smart play by McConnell there. If it was intentional, I'm <laughs> giving it the benefit. I think it was. Her second season with the Perth Breakers. Won the championship back in 92. Runner-up in 93. AIS without a title. Losing the grand final in 86 to Nutter Wadding. Breakers with the fresh 30 seconds can reset. That was deflected initially by Taylor. Then it came off Cox. AIS basketball, a chance to open up a handy break. There he is the two-time coach of the year, Phil Brown. Actually, Gina Stevens, that was not a very good angle for the pass. She should have taken the ball down a bit lower and made the little bounce pass inside. We see that happen a lot in women's game. I've got to watch the angle of the pass. Veal lost it. Gets it back on the drive inside. Good little Aqua Forder all the way. Taylor, good play. Little handoff. Ball knocked away. Goes the way of Jackson. Inside. Oh. Blocking foul. Tully's second personal foul. Tully really needs to be careful, unfortunately, and they really need her out, out, out of the court for 40 minutes tonight. There's the call again. She was just in there too late. Just a little bit late. Lauren Jackson's working. Phil Brown saying, what's working? Let's just keep going back at her. If she's getting the job done, let's yeah. just keep going at her. Well, absolutely. Like Michelle said before, if they double team or triple team, she's got the open. Another steal from Bevilacqua. McConnell leads the break. No support. She'll slow it down. It is. Now Whittle. She did this last week against Adelaide. Can't make it there. Cox fought Cox. hard. The ricochet landed with Jackson. Smitherum to Taylor. Travel. But how close was Bevilacqua to another steal? She was right behind her. Taylor with four turnovers to this point. AIS lead by five. We've played seven minutes of the opening half of the grand final. Good give inside to Bevilacqua. Couldn't finish it. Gets her own rebound. Again, can't finish. The breakers shooting percentage now has tumbled to 26%. Four of 15. Here's Smith knocked away by Cox. AIS recover. The AIS conversely six of nine from the field. And Tully Bevilacqua just signaling to a bench that she needs a bit of a breather for a second. I think we'll see Karen Owens coming into the game. Here's Jackson getting around Whittle. Kick out, Taylor wide open. That's just pretty to watch, isn't it? I mean, she penetrates, they, they double team and she dumps the ball to the open man. Timeout called by Murray Tressida of the Perth Breakers. The AIS killing it from the crowd. 18 to 11, our score. What a start for the Institute team. Let's take you down to Murray Tressida. Oh, Live and die by that outside top. We want to go inside. When it's gone, the Jenny, you've been standing. No one's been touching the ball. Goes inside, they double. We've got to get targets out there. Defensively, 
You've got to play tighter up on it. You make it put the ball to the floor in that situation. Don't give it the outside one. She puts it to the floor, we'll get help inside there, okay? So we're in transition, looking to go inside. Nothing happens then. Put the ball to the floor is strong. We can't live and die on that outside jumper. Got to go to the floor. We're getting good looks. Finish off. Here goes. Go. So there's the word from Murray Tresser to the coach of the Perth Breakers. An outstanding start from the AIS, 18 to 11 the lead at this stage. Michelle, they're shooting the ball at an excellent clip from the field, but they're getting good looks at the basket. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we just heard Murray say you can't live and die by the three-point line. So like we said, brilliant coaches, we are a little bit earlier. They've got to get the ball inside. I think we'll see that. Hopefully they'll uh, be dumping it into to Jennifer Whittle and then cutting through and maybe getting a give and, give and go action. Let's see what they can come up with. Cox goes immediately out of this timeout. Is blocked by Jackson. Points, rebounds, blocks. Jackson doing it all. Smith back to Jackson. Now Smitherum to Veal. The lob. Jackson. Here's another two. No. That was the easiest chance she's had. Now Kieran Owens in the game to try and speed things down. The guards have to put pressure on that pass so they, you know, that, that ball could just can't be so easily lobbed into her. I agree with you, Michelle. I think that um, the Perth guards are really going to have to absolutely go the, all the way out. They're going to have to put a lot of defensive pressure on every pass that score no, won't count. Big call here. Foul off the ball. Referees are going to chat about it because the shot went in. You may find the basket counts and Perth basketball. Oh, no. Wow. Score cancelled. Foul on the yeah, AIS. You're breaking Perth's heart, that's for sure. Let's head down to Simone Thurtell. She's got a couple of special guests with her. Simone. Clinton this afternoon, box 19 is the Jackson box. I'm here with Gary and Marie Jackson, who are Lauren's parents, and it's been tough out there for Lauren so far, but 11 points on the board. She's doing really well. Yeah, very well. It's a good start to the game. I just hope they can maintain it. And how is she feeling before this afternoon's grand final? Nervous would probably describe it pretty well. How is mum feeling before this afternoon's grand final? A little bit nervous. And was there any advice for Lauren before she went out there? Just stay out of foul trouble. <laughs> Treat it like any other game. And you must be proud of her already with the MVP award during the week. Extremely proud, yeah. She's done very well. <laughs> Unexpectedly well. Gary and Maria, I'll let you get back to the match. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Simone with Mr and Mrs Jackson. Not a bad basketballing pair either, yeah. were you? Oh, absolutely. Certainly. She's got the breeding another three-point shot for McConnell. And interestingly enough, uh, can I speak? Interestingly enough, uh, Jackson's gone out of the game and Perth has scored five in a row. Five points in a row. 18-16 the score now as we come up on 10 minutes remaining in the first. Batkovic spinning inside. Smart that play. was tough. Just a great play. She saw Owen sneaking around for the trap down the baseline, so she went in the middle. Great little hook shot. She had 21 in the semi-final here a fortnight ago. As and the she AS just lit it up. 81-62. A great finish to the season. That will remain with the breakers. Yeah, sorry, Clinton, but she, yeah, she's really lit it up the second half or the back half of the season, that's for sure. McConnell to inbound. No motion for her. Now Owens recovered as you see the ball head out again. Breakers back with him four. Now McConnell from range again for another three. Well short. McClure with a rebound. Back to McConnell. Will she go again? No. On the drive. Kick out for McClure. Has to send it back up the top to Whittle. McConnell for another three. Again can't get it. They get it back again. Kicks it inside oh. for Whittle. She lost it. And Jen should be ready for those, I think, Michelle. I mean, there's an... A couple of passes that have gone into her that she hasn't really been ready for. Yeah, it's pretty gutsy in a row. Actually, if it was me, I think I would have jacked it just one more time. <laughs> I'm thinking, I just had three attempts. One of these are going to go down. Look at the offensive rebound so yeah, far. See, the breakers hurts. with seven. AIS just one offensively, but the breakers haven't really converted on those offensive rebounds. Here's Globitz on the drive. Counter. And the foul. Well, we've often talked about where Lauren Jackson's going to go after or in the next season, but boy, there's Globitz, there's Veal, there's Bakovic. I wonder where they're all going to go. There's Taylor. <laughs> and Taylor. McConnell and Veal. Owen sit I mean, down. the list is just yeah. endless. It is. I like Lauren Jackson's quotes in the paper this week. We were thinking of getting all the girls together and going to play in Albury or Brisbane and just get well, the franchise that, yeah. in those cities. I, I tell you what, the WNBI wouldn't mind picking them up and putting them in, in Brisbane. That would be yeah. fantastic. Or maybe even Hobart. Get the Hobart Islanders back in the league. It would be wonderful. But they will go there separate ways. The margin, by the way, is back to seven now, which it was a short time ago. The Breakers got it back to two, but now 
the AIS have scored the last five points. Here's McClure, lob for oh, Whittle. Has it this time, goes baseline, blocked by Batkovic, but the foul on the play on Batkovic, that will be her second personal foul. And that's what, you know, Perth breakers have to realise. When the AIS are putting the ball on the floor down their offensive, uh, offensive end, fouls are being called every time. So they're going to do the same down this end and give the referee the opportunity to be calling fouls down that end as well. So that was a good play. 11 fouls called so far as Jenny Whittle walks to the line for two. Her husband-to-be drove all the way over here from Perth. Hail and shine. Fantastic. That is a hike, isn't it? That's love. Man. That is. <laughs> and there's a lot of supporters here from Perth. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's like there's 40 of them up there with their green shirts. 23-18 our score. Nine and a half minutes remaining. Opening half in the grand final. Globitz. Now Snell. Back to Globitz. This is for three. Too deep with a shot. Cox and Taylor Cox. share it. Cox She's is so tough. She gets a jump ball call. Bakovic fighting out with it. Another AIS, ex AIS player, I should say. Great vertical jump from Rahani Cox. She's not very tall, but she has to play like a 4 5 player. This tap will be interesting to see if she wins it. Bakovic will try and flick it out to Globitz or Snell. Cox perhaps towards Stevens if she can. See, she came up with it. It didn't come up with possession, which is Lovitz, the most important part. Snell open for two. Whittle the rebound. Chance for the breakers to string a couple of scores together. McClure, though, sees plenty of blue uniforms back. Will slow it down. Cox now. Not enough movement in their offense. They don't, they're not running hard through their offense. Breakers two of eight from beyond the three-point line. Make it two of nine. I'd like to see Stevens get uh, get in the offensive end a little bit more, get involved a little bit more. Smitherum. Now Taylor. Whittle urging her to shoot almost. Skip pass. Smitherum wide open. Bevilacqua kicks it away. Shot clock will reset. AIS will have the basketball. Substitutions either way. Lauren Jackson will come back in for the AIS. Lisa McLean checking in for the breakers. It's interesting, Sab, to see Cox leaving the court so early. She didn't do too bad while she was out there, I thought. Yeah, especially when, I mean, it's great that they put McLean in, but she's another three-point shooter. Let's hope yeah. she's on tonight. And uh, and the coach is telling him that he doesn't want three-pointers, so. Oh, contact, no whistle. Globitz for two. No rotation in the defence. It's good D by Stevens then. Breakers find themselves in a seven-point hole. Whittle goes to work with the hook, short with it. Globitz the rebound. Murray Tresseter may have to expend his second time out shortly. Especially if the AS can score here. Jackson from range. Couldn't get it. Stevens the rebound. Perth want to grab that ball and, and just run. push it. Absolutely. Push it. Try and make try and convert in layups. Well, we saw them run a few fast breaks early, and, and that's it just opens the game up. And I mean it's just incredible that they're just walking the ball down the floor. Breakers 27% from the field. The AIS 55. Bevilacqua on the drive. Hand off Whittle. Oh, Good move. Great move. Great little penetra penetration by Bevilacqua. Good finish by Whittle once again, putting the ball on the floor and stepping around nicely. Whittle has eight points. McConnell six for the breakers. Jackson with 11. Globitz seven for the home team. Here's Globitz again. Baseline for another two. Couldn't get it. McLean the rebound. Bevilacqua has Stevens going. Outlet tough. Oh. Good save, Stevens. But the AAS recovered. Gee, all the Perth players stopped. Thought the pass was going too deep. Underestimated Gina's jumping ability there. That was there. incredible. I'd like to see that on replay. Here's Taylor now. The AAS in command of a five-point lead. Seven minutes to play first half. Globitz, Bakovic, free throw line. Gets the roll. Here's the thing, if you know Jackson is the superstar she is, you know she's going to get her 20 to 30 points a game, but the others have to make sure they respect the other players and really crack down and try and stop them from scoring. And it's not get, they're not getting it done. Down here in offence for Perth, you see Penny Taylor step right off Jenna Stevens. Jenna's just not in the game at all at the moment. She has just two points. Shot clock down to seven. McClure out to Stevens. She might go. have to be creative. That's for two. Can't get it off Jackson. It will stay for the Perth Breakers. Cox getting back in now for Murray Tresseter's team. The AAS making some subs as well. Tammy Hoare in for the first time. Kristen Beal comes in. Batkovic and Globitz out. Jenny Whittle sits down for Perth. Well, we've got a oh, short team out there for Perth at the moment. Some, some big work needed from Cox and McClure. 
Got to start filling it up offensively. That field goal percentage, 29%. Good McClure job. McClure inside. Couldn't get it. Poor into the game. Immediately comes up with a possession. Now Veal. That's the way to go. They go at the, the best player on the court and hope that, it, that a foul's called. This is big. That's huge, and she's cut the air. Gina Stevens hits the deck. It is a 10-point game now. 30 to 20, our score. The Breakers beginning to find themselves in a hole. Mike McHugh, the coach of the Canberra Capitals, chatting with Australian Opals coach Tom Ma. Watching this game intently. The AIS by 10. Mike McHugh in the running to get hey, Lauren Tommy. Jackson. Tom hungry. Hasn't been fit for seven days. Where are you, Rob? McClure kicks it out. Stevens Breakers must score. Acrobatic. Great job. Oh, Fantastic. Boy. Great move that's from Gina Steve, Stevens. That's what she's got to do. She's got to take this game by the scruff of the next over, over the next three minutes and try and get a job done offensively. Or inside, got it. That's good for the confidence. Nothing like bringing in the play, eighth player off the bench and she scores straight away. Great job from Tammy Hoare. You see the time Ooh. remaining. Stevens with the ball. Strong. She's got it back. Oh, she's Gina come Stevens. to play now. That's a big two offensive plays from Gina Stevens. You see the breakers contingent that have made their way from out west. Michelle Timms, as we have a look at that huge offensive rebound from Gina Stevens. She really, the defense was really quite good on her, but she threw it up against the backboard in hope of doing exactly what she did, and that was to come up with the rebound and throw it back up there. Now for the three-point conversion. All of a sudden, she has seven points. Another player in the hunt for the 2000 team. There's a lot of talent out there to be chosen from. <laughs> Certainly is. Margin back to seven. Poor. Smitherum. Veal the lob. Jackson. Good help D from Cox. No whistle. Ball knocked away. Oh. Stephen surely fouled by Taylor. It will be break of basketball. You know, That's I, what Rani Cox has got to do, get help there on Lauren Jackson. Absolutely, and I don't know whether that was an um, intentional foul by Penny Taylor, but it was definitely a very, very smart one by it. Totally stopped the fast break. It certainly did, but Lauren Jackson had a few words to the referees. Murray Tresser did as well. He wanted the offensive foul called on Jackson to try and get her into <laughs> foul trouble. She has two. Had that been called on her, she's got three, and all of a sudden it's a situation for Phil Brown. Five minutes to play first half, seven point game. A score here gets the breakers right back in it. Cox, this is for three from range. She used to play here at the AIS. This is her first season out of the Institute at Perth. Couldn't score there. Veal the lob for Hawk. Can she do it again? Yes. Too easy. You know, Perth are, Perth are doing the right thing in full fronting. But that help is coming just, a, just marginally late. late. Yeah. Even when Cox was down there to help last time, it was still just a fraction too late. Bevel Aqua. Now Whittle trying to draw a foul from Jackson. The hook over the top. Baby. Nice, nice little bucket there. At the other end, Hall couldn't control it. Breakers have worked their way back into this game, Michelle, over the last three or four minutes, haven't they? Yeah, they had a little bit of a run on. They're looking, looking quite good. And I like the idea of getting the, a mixture of shots inside and outside. It's got to tighten up down that defensive end. 33 to 58 percent from the field however the breakers still shooting awfully but they're only down by seven bevel aqua now they're feeding whittle the kick out mcconnell stephen she's shot. hot at the minute she's hot at the minute she gets the roll that's her shot that one bounce pull up jumper it's quite incredible when you're not really in the game and you do something amazing like pull down a really strong rebound or do something that you just happen to get the roll on a basket and suddenly you light up and that's what happened to Gina Stevens. Jackson's gone cold. The foul is going to be on Veal on the rebound. That could be two free throws for Tully Bevilacqua. It will be. So all of a sudden it could be back to a three-point ball game if Tully makes this. You can see the contact there. Veal just trying to keep Bevilacqua out of the contest. Isn't that a block out? <laughs> it was an illegal you get, you block. Get, you get taught that. She no, she does, how do you do it right in front of the ref like that? I hope she it? doesn't listen to this game. I'm in trouble next year. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said anything yet. That, anyway. We're just warming up. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Here's Tully for two. It is an eight to two breakers run. And now the captain knocks down the second. We have a three-point game. Back in the press again to try and force something. Although the AIS might break it down. They've got Fitzgerald open. She's got the basketball. Someone's going to go up, to her. Decided Ooh. against the shot. Veal will take it under pressure. Veal, Hits for three. big three. She's happy about that. 
She has had a wonderful season. A dozen points, 6.6 .6 assists. Stevens draws the foul. She will be off to the line to shoot a couple of free throws. Phil Brown still with two timeouts up his sleeve. Murray Tressida has won over the closing three and a half minutes. I was just going to say what a great acquisition Veal would be to any team in the league, wouldn't she? You know, she's she's got so much experience. She's so young, but she's just had a great season and she's ready to step into any starting lineup in the league. So I'm sure there's quite a few teams out there that'll be chasing her down as well. And in all seriousness, the Bullion Boomers would obviously hope to pick up one or two of the AES graduates. Oh, another point guard, probably. <laughs> yeah, just make it four. <laughs> nah, yeah, yes. definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely, we're in the hunt. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who we end up with. Yeah, you'd be great in the six foot and under league, wouldn't you? Here's Veal again, but she travelled that time. 37-33, we've got a timeout. Murray Tressida will call the timeout. We will take you down to it shortly to hear what his words of advice will be. Let's take you through the award winners for these respective teams, which were announced on Monday night. Lauren Jackson from the AIS. Look at that. That is a wonderful CV. Five awards there from the this season. Phil Brown was named the coach of the year from Perth. Gina Stevens named to the All-Star Five. Tully Bevelac with a good hands award. And Jenny Whittle was named the league's shot leading blocker. shot blocker. Let's take you down now to Murray Tressida. Way to withstand that now, OK? Starting to take the crowd out of it. But be smart by milking the free throw line. Milk the free throw line. Go inside. When it goes inside, then keep moving. Keep moving. Don't let Jenny go one against three. And as she operates, we spoke at the start of the game, get to the basket there. So press back to 2-3. We want some solid stops here. Let's see if we can't work over more pressure on the pass is making that lob pass. And be aware of where split line, you're now three quarters running that. Okay. We're cracking that show now, guys. Come on. Murray Tressida there. And now here's Simone Thurtell with another celebrity interview. Simone. We said there's plenty of athletes in the crowd. Daniel Kowalski has taken time from the swimming pool. He's sitting here really nervously, Daniel, aren't you? You're riding every basket here. Well, I, I guess being a scholarship holder of the Institute, as with all the athletes here, you know, we're really getting really behind the girls and, and hoping through they come through. And when you have no control, not being able to be out there and you're such a competitive person, you can't help but get nervous. You're also quite competitive in basketball, though, as well, aren't you? I, I like to set the record straight. I love the game, but I have no game at all. <laughs> um, it's just a lot of fun. I think it's because I don't have that team background. Uh, that's why I really like it. A lot of emotion on the court with the girls playing together for the last time, but a lot of emotion up here as well. Definitely. Like I said, you know, this is an opportunity for the girls to, to win for the first time. And, um, you know, everyone sees one another day in, day out. And it's important that we get behind one another, not just in the basketball and all sports. And that's what they are, AIS promotes. It's great. Daniel, good luck with the rest of the game, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Simone, there with Daniel Kowalski. He's he just is so lovely, isn't he? He is a real big basketball <laughs> fan, really is very close to uh, the former South East Melbourne Magic players, now the Titans, and Chris Anston. He spent some time with Chris in Dallas following the basketball and wrote a great article for one-on-one -on -one magazine when he went to the campus of Duke University. So he is a big basketball fan. Meanwhile, the AIS lead is now just two following the successful free throws. The Breakers, 11 of 12 from the charity stripe, the AIS four of six. So the line being very friendly to Perth to extend the D again. Veal caught in the double team. Now Jackson, they can break it down. They swallow it down though through Fitzgerald have to agree, this has been everything that uh, we anticipated it being this game. Poor the lob for Jackson, running out of room. It's going to be AIS ball. Tully looked up incredulously. And Jackson, Jackson hasn't had a good foul. five minutes. Yeah, no, she hasn't. But I think that's, that's that has come too. We see here the replay. Oh, oh nice <laughs> boat of Jenny take, Whittle. Take that. Take that, big girl. I think it's the upcourt pressure, though, coming from Perth, full court. Defensive pressure, that always helps. Slows the ball down. Veal for three. Can't hit. Bevelac with a rebound and Perth can tie or take the lead on this possession. They were down by 10 a short time ago. The breakers steady. McConnell, McLean. Let's see what Whittle can do again. I'd like to see them go back to her, especially as Jackson has two fouls and Whittle has delivered so far in this game with 10 oh, points. Although shot. this is for the lead. Big shot. McClure couldn't make it. Whittle Big the rebound. rebound. Will she go at Jackson? She does. This is to tie it up. Oh, yes! She gets the the roll. Roll. Goodness. <laughs> Incredible. Good rebound from Jenny Whittle. She had to take the rebound from behind and that's a great job from Whittle. 15-5. to five, The breakers run. 
and foul on the play. It's really smart play by Jackson too to not foul. She knows she's got two and Whittle took it at her and she did what uh, what she should have done is, and that is just stand up there as tall as she could. If you're Phil Brown, do you take Lauren Jackson out here in the run to half time to protect her, ensure she doesn't get a cheap foul here and have three at half time? No, I'd leave her out there, and if she got a third, then I'd drag her. But definitely leave her out there until, you know, she's she's an she's a young player, but she's very experienced, and uh, they need her out there. It may be a line ball game, but which coach would be happier at the moment, Murray Tracy, <laughs> given that they've staven off that rally? Well, I think that um, Perth have to be pretty happy that they've got a bit of a roll happening. Jackson inside should score there. It does. She has 13 on five of nine shooting. And really, both coaches have to be pretty happy, I'd say. Crowd getting involved. McLean can't make it. Jackson, the rebound. Number five defensively for Lauren Jackson. Veal on the drive inside. Kick out. Batkovic couldn't get it. Whittle with the rebound. And Veal went down heavily. Sharon Arnold just stopped the play to prevent any injury. Perth will have the ball. That was very nice of the referee, wasn't it? Well, I could see Jen coming down right on top of it. She'd been... Had actually was laying down there before she even took the rebound. She just couldn't get out of the way. Michelle, you not may not believe it, but refs do have hearts <laughs> deep yeah. down. Of course they do. McClure, McLean, McConnell, they have feelings as well. So do you, Clinton. That's a beautiful thing I've found out in the last couple of weeks. McLean on the drive. <laughs> oh, she throws it over the back. Oh. It did a lap of honour. Smith comes up with it. Outlet now for Veal. Has a couple to beat. Through the leg dribble. Just looks magnificent. Kick out. Charge. Offensive foul. She knew it was going to happen too. As soon as she went to pass the ball, ran straight into the player. McClure comes up limping there. That's why. Good action on the play. Yep. ABC Sport cameras have it all for you. Now it's going to be there's Michael Klim along with Daniel Kowalski preparing for a halftime shootout. Alex Popoff there as well. They're Patria talking, Thomas. They're talking <laughs> technique. <Yeah. laughs> Daniel was very nervous. He was going on about it before the game. Just a word on this discussion from the referees. They are talking about whether or not Kristen Veal had actually passed the ball off. If she had, then it's a pushing foul and two free throws. They say she, she, she had. had the ball, so therefore it's an offensive foul. No free throws. They say she hadn't passed it off. McLean to McConnell. The break is down by two. As you see there, we're inside of the final minute of the opening half of the grand final. McConnell was in complete control. Leanne Grant alongside <laughs> me just about had a heart attack. I did. I was trying to hold the ball for it. Then the Lacqua steps inside. Oh. Whittle lost it. Having to try and get it back. AIS ball. Although Carolyn Gillespie says we'll go Perth's way. Yep. Now they reset the shot clock in all of that. The score is anticipating it being an AIS ball. Mm. And no coach has picked that. it up. No. There's a four-second difference now between the shot and the game clock. So, theoretically, if Perth run it down just about all the way, they won't give the AIS another chance. Oh, I'd want Whittle to have it, just quietly. They need a two to tie it away. It's going to be a clear-out. All these guards love these clear-outs. Shot clock down to eight. Oh, you're and wrong, seven, really. six. McClure, Bevel, Lapper inside. Oh. Blocked by Jackson. AIS have time. Smith, Jackson running the floor. Smith all the way. Good decision by Smith. Local fans are happy. And at the end of 20 minutes, the home team, the AIS, have a lead of four. 41 to 37. Our score. What a way to finish the opening half. Ready to go, second half here at the AIS Arena. 41-37, our score. The AIS on top in the grand final. They're in the blue uniform, controlling possession to start the second half. Gee, were you derogatory towards Natalie and Brewery? I could not believe that as Bevelac was called for the foul. <laughs> Just as she can't believe that, I'm sure that's her third. She's got to be real careful. <laughs> yes, it is. Bevel Aqua, here is your car, Michelle. We're going to have a, just a quick glance at the $65,000 machine. Oh, 88. 88. 88. Oh. Get a life. You've got to get out of it, <laughs> mate. Thank you to BMW for lending that to us today. Oh. It is on display here. Fantastic. Yeah, I'll have it back in one piece in uh, the year 2000, OK, guys? <laughs> Thank you very much. The way you two drove in the car park in that, <laughs> it, was, it was all hands on deck. Here's Batkovic going inside, tough shot, gets her own rebound, good follow. 
she gave herself a little tap there, well deserved. Bekovic is having a hell of a game. If you're just joining us, we're in Canberra for the WNBL Grand Final. Clinton Gribus, Leanne Grantham and Michelle Timms with you on ABC Sport. Sunday basketball tomorrow morning from half past nine. We will wrap up all of the basketball world. This is it, though, the grand final. McClure inside, couldn't get it. Globitz comes up with the rebound. The AIS looking for their first ever title. The Breakers looking for their second championship. Taylor on the pull-up, in and out. Whittle the rebound. Bit of slapping going on out there with the girls. It's getting very intense, as you'd expect. Last game for the season, everything at stake. Stevens inside, the beautiful. finger roll, the runner, beautiful. But she's lucky she didn't get a bonus shot on that one. She has 13 points now. We mentioned Leanne earlier on. She was very quiet. She certainly was, and I said she pulled down a couple of good rebounds. Oh, Bakovic, but gets her own rebound again. She's had a superb game. McClure called for the foul, her second. Yeah, it was quite a funny funny sight to see. There was McConnell and, uh, and Tully Bavalacqua in there trying to rebound against her. They didn't even come up to her head with their hands up. They were in there. That's the most important hey, thing. I might add at this stage too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Always one for words, but uh, Michelle <laughs> really? Chandler. Michelle Chandler's yes. having a hands day now. If you, I would have got killed if I didn't mention this. So uh, Mitch and the girls, I'm sure they're up to their about uh, six can of um, oh, diet, diet coke. 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 <laughs> anyway, so uh, missing you guys. Wish I was there. Hope you're having a big one. Yes, indeed. Bull and Boomers having a wonderful year, and that's out of play. Touched by the AOS. Phil Brown says, "Who touched it? Who touched it?" Sharon Arnold says, no, it was deflected away. AAS with a six-point lead. Crowd getting vocal. There's a men's game on here tonight. The Canberra Cannons at home to the Brisbane Bullets. A Bullets win will get them into the playoffs. We will review that tomorrow morning. Stevens on the drive. She's fouled. Off to the line. Is that on Jackson? Yeah, I think it is. It, it is. is. It's foul number three on Lauren Jackson. It's not panic stations just yet. Do you take her out yet? No. Oh, no, I don't know. Okay. I've got to hope she doesn't get any more soon. Good decision, though, by Gina Stevens. She's done that a couple of times in this game, and she's got to keep penetrating because she's the only one out there who is. McClure is just a bit tight on her shot still. She's hitting the base of the ring. Stevens played us in the most important game we had all year, very last game, and she just ripped us up. She just ate us alive. Uh, she just had one of the, the best games I've ever seen Gina Stevens play. Were you because... guarding her? Yeah, I was, actually. <laughs> My fine defence and, uh, right, Lee, when was the last time you defended anyone? Good oh, Lord. Taylor <laughs> on the drive. I feel like I'm between Lennox Lewis and Amanda Holyfield at the fight tomorrow. The sad thing is, I played against AIS last time they were in the grand final, and I played the last time Perth was in the, in the grand final. Here I am sitting here with you two. You're the common denominator. Bill, all the way, foul, no, basket, yes. She wanted the foul. She looked as though she was hitting the back of the head. Yeah, way to finish off, though, and Bevilacqua's got to be thanking her lucky stars on that one. Here it is again, Bevilacqua. Got her across the top of the score. 49-41, AIS, handy break, back out by eight. Whittle to go to work against Jackson. Kick out, McConnell. They really need a three, would be nice. Stepping around, hand off, Stevens, foul by oh, Bill. No, no foul. Oh, my goodness. That was on the arm, well and truly, and, and that's a block. block on yeah. Stevens. Gotta make sure she doesn't say anything. Good temperament. I think she was extremely unlucky. Yeah, she could have gone up oh. saying a few words, couldn't yeah, she? Yeah, sure I would. This is the blocking foul. That was clearly there. Yeah. Pro oh, probably worth it. She's probably a bit frustrated, just quietly. It's only her second personal foul. Gina Stevens leads the game in scoring with 15. Now we'll see what sort of character the Breakers have. Rahani Cox has just come onto the court. She's another one who can penetrate. They really have to then start looking for Jenny Whittle again. Jackson for two. Devil Aqua, the rebound. Down the middle, kick out, Stevens too deep. Breakers just a shade rattled. I was just unlucky, you know. I think that obviously Tully thought Gina was moving a little bit quicker than that. But obviously in Gina's eyes, she had that three-point line. She was going to jack it. Devil Aqua, Norta five from the field, has made four free throws, has three fouls. Three rebounds, three assists, three steals, three blocks. She's got everything. Jackson over Whittle. Bevel Aqua rebound number four. She's getting a bit frustrated out there. She thinks the foul should be called. Lauren's got to just get on with her game and not worry about the refs at all. As Michelle said, that word temperament could come into play over the closing 17 minutes. This Cox. is big from Cox. Got it. Boom. I like the girl. I reckon she's a real decent player. Veal took Bevel Aqua on. Oh. Beautiful give out for Globus. She's oh. fouled by McConnell. Yeah, it's a cheap oh, foul. Oh, wow. 
Oh, no, no. Now, if that doesn't make your highlight real clear, yeah. and I'm not talking about 10th. <laughs> Go for it, Timsy. Oh, I swear. The top 10 players of the week yeah, tomorrow morning. And the morning. women can only make 10th whenever they make something spectacular. Look at that. There's oh, a voting that. panel, Michelle. I'm oh, feeding them. I've got my backs anyway, against the wall. Anyway, hear it. Speak to the hand. Bakovic forces a jump with Cox. What a great game. So yeah. intense. And this can go either way from here, can't it? Just what everyone wanted, probably except for the two coaches. My They'd like to be up by 20 by now. Yeah. My money's on Cox winning this tap too. He's got the leap as we spoke about. I guess I lost that. Okay. Is the BMW on the line? <laughs> Yeah. Veal with the basketball, AIS by five. And Bakovic wants this ball against Cox. She knows she's smaller against her. Couldn't get it, gets her own rebound, fouled oh. by Cox. She wants the ball. You said that before, Michelle. She posts up and she really wants the ball. Phil Brown there, he'd be very happy with the way she's playing. Followed up. Oh, mate, Whoa, that she was got all ball. ball. Clinton. Yeah. Mr. Hey, I agree They're with you being too. very, very quiet at this point in time. The way, you, the way you're going at each other, I know what you're going <laughs> me as well, I'll agree. Good Lord. Still, this is the way. They got a few tough calls in the beginning of the game, in the first half, uh, Perth. So they just yep. weathered, weathered the storm. And that's going to be break a ball. AIS by six. Nice hustle by Veal. <laughs> McConnell crossing the timeline. Now Stevens. Let's see if they go back to Whittle. Never lack well. Stevens on the pull up. Yeah. That's for two. She's just so pretty to watch. What fantastic technique. She is six of ten now from the field. We've played four minutes of the second half. Taylor. Plenty of Yellow uniforms back. She might try and find Bakovic. Good fake from Veal. Got open around Bevilacqua and then oh, knocks it down. It. What a great tussle Bevilacqua and Veal are having. Fun to watch. Glad I'm not out there, actually. <laughs> McConnell gets slowed down. Good D by Globitz. Margin back to seven. A six, rather. 52-46. Here's Cox. This is for two. Toe on the line. Oh, great shot. The Breaker fans are getting excited. Margin back to four. They're winding it up now. This is a Did showcase. You? you always worry going into a grand final, and we've seen that so often with NRL and AFL grand finals. They don't live up to expectations. As Bakovic gets one to fall, this one is living up to expectations. Uh, Perth really need a rotation in defence. They need to take Cox off Bakovic. That's unfortunate. Bevilacqua's fourth foul. So four fouls for Tully to go with four points and four rebounds. She sits down, Karen Owens comes in. And, and Karen Owens is a quality player. She played here in, uh, at the AIS and played for Canberra. She's been around and she can get the job done. And the AIS will get it back. Murray Tressida, the coach of the Breakers. 29 and 26, his win-loss record over his career. Three and six versus Phil Brown coach teams. Taylor oh, tough over McConnell. Great move. Stevens the rebound. That was something Perth needed. What tension here in the AIS arena. Cox against Jackson. Stevens. McConnell thought about the three. Globitz was still in the vicinity. Shot clock at 10. Good poise by Perth. They really need a bucket this time down. Here it comes. And it's from Gina Stevens. No. Oh, oh Perth. Perth. Rebound. Get it up there, big girl. Good job, Cox. She's come out on the floor and played super. She's, she's got... So, she's so darn strong. She's such an athlete. Seven points for Cox. Taylor offensive foul. Breakers to get it back. There's the help out defence. It must have been by, early enough. Provided by Rahani our, Cox. Our girl of the moment. <laughs> Of course, she certainly is. Some former teammates. To reiterate for you, if you weren't with us at 5 o'clock when we started this live broadcast, as you see the contact, eight of the AAS girls are playing together for the last time. They graduate at a dinner on Thursday night. Heard Phil Brown on ABC Radio Grandstand talking about it today. Will the emotion get to them? So far, it hasn't. 14 and a half minutes to go, and Cox, the player of the minute. Oh. Couldn't get it that time. Bakovic the rebound. And uh, McClure has been taken out. Uh, sorry, McConnell's out. McClure is in. Yeah, well, they needed somebody to come on and help help out on Bakovic. Oh, that's oh, offensive right again. No, this time yep. it's on Kieran Owens. Oh, OK. I thought she called offensive then. Kim, sorry. Owens just leaning in. It was a tight one. You see the lean in. 
There's Smith and the gets elbow. Rid of Poor, the push off. There's another angle we'll on it. <laughs> yeah, we'd better go to that other angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's plenty we of contact, plenty of contact. Smitherham got Stevens in the air. Oh, Stevens blocked the shot. It was deflected <laughs> away, so Smitherham gets it back. Shot clock at 20. What a great all-round game Stevens is having. Edge of the seat stuff. Look at Bakovic, wide open. Too long in the key on Good Lauren call, Jackson. Yep. Bakovic has just Bakovic. got the hunger. She, she just wants has. it. She wants it, and she wants it now. She's ready to take the game. 54-50 our score. 14 minutes exactly to play. Phil Brown. Named Coach of the Year on Monday night for a second year in succession. Yeah. Next season he'll be he'll struggle to make the playoffs, you would assume, just by the fact that he's going to lose eight players. Uh, oh, oh, no call of anything. <laughs> Three I think I knew what to call. Stevens oh, blocked what? by Batkovic. <laughs> now Veal. Smith pull up. Got it. Oh, I like the fact that these young AIS kids coming off the bench. They probably see about seven minutes a game, and they ping the ball up. She's two of two, right on her season average scoring of four points. Well, she hurt Perth in the semi-final here. In the second half, she stepped right up. Whittle against Batkovic, steps inside. Oh, oh nice good move, work. Whittle. Couldn't get it. Foul on Jackson. Oh, that, was a, a cheap foul. Number four. Oh, that was a soft foul. Oh, that's Unlucky. huge. She's Lauren Jackson, now do you take her out of the game? I think so. 13 minutes to go, she's got four. Gee, yeah, she didn't even do it. Soft. Clearly got her there. Jackson sits down. Well. Wow. Tell you what, though, Bakovic is the one that's... Absolutely. You know, she's doing a good job for him as well. She's not too happy. No, but, I mean, it was a clear foul, no question. But, I mean, if you're going to hit someone under there, you hit them. You don't let the ball go in the hole. Especially from Jenny Whittle, who's now up to 12 points. Cox kept it alive, but she was leaning in on Tammy Hall. Rahani Cox gets her second foul as Gina Stevens also out of the game. Four points the margin. Lauren Jackson and Tully Bevilacqua with four fouls. That is Perth's eighth team foul. We've played just 640. We've played just 640 of the second half. Two free throws to the AIS for every foul defensively on Perth from here on in. And to the AIS's credit, though, they've been putting the ball on the floor and hammering that key. They've been getting nearly every shot, you know, by putting the ball on the floor. So they've been going at it and really drawing the contact. Phil Brown went to the end of the bench, spoke with Lauren Jackson at length there. The ABC 7.30 report film crew right behind listening in. A special on Lauren on the 7.30 report with Gary O'Brien on Monday night. Five points the difference. We're watching ABC Sports exclusive coverage of the WNBL Grand Final. McClure left hand, couldn't get it. Matkovic the rebound. Well, McClure really hasn't got herself into the game just yet. It's, you know, she must be a bit frustrated. She's looking a bit pale out there too. Oh, I think that's McClure. She's, she's coloured like that. She's very, very pale. I spoke to her about that. I thought she was sick actually last week in the preliminary final, week before in the preliminary final. But she said, no, that's just me. Matkovic with 14 points now. She Earth is needs, not in foul trouble. Perth needs some leadership. They really need some leadership out there. I wouldn't be surprised if Beverly Lacken well, comes on again. Oh, absolutely. I think Tully's got to be on the floor, actually. Seven points, the margin. Not enough movement in offence. Very stagnant. Three of the last five games between these two have gone to overtime. The shot clock down to three. Rahani Cox has to shoot. Can't get it. McConnell there. Smither and big, big rebound. rebound by Smith. Now Smith has Veal oh, going. Cox oh. the steal. Three on two. Perth on the fast break. Cox the kick out. McConnell couldn't get the shot up. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a waste of a three on two, in fact. Whittle inside. Should score. Oh, oh, doesn't foul. Doesn't off roll. to the line for two. Was that our girl again? Was that Cox coming up with that steal? It was. What a fine game she's having. You a player manager, soon? <laughs> <laughs> Whittle again inside. Draws the foul. Should have put this one away, though. Kind of lucky he didn't get the roll. Oh, boy. What drama in the grand final. Down by seven, they need these two here. You know, it's interesting. McLean's on. It might be a, a good time for McLean to start lining it up. You know, she's a sneaky little player. She, uh, she, didn't, she only took one shot in the first half, so it'll be really interesting to see if she can line it up from the outside, hopefully catch the AS sleeping. They're up the floor again. Perth really have to put a lot of pressure on the ball handlers here. Close to the centre line there. Yep, Smitherham, smart heads up play, didn't go over. She's now got the basketball, McLean guarding her. Margin is five inside of 12 minutes, remaining in the grand final. Very impressed with the contributions oh, that Smith and Smith have made. Couldn't get it back, Kovic. That was big. 
and smart play resets. Ben Bakovic getting the job done. Bill Smith, good fake. This is for two this time. Deanna Smith is stepping shot. up when it matters most. What a great job. Haven't seen much of her all year. And she's come on and just done a tremendous job for the young girls. She surpassed her season scoring average already. McLuhan now trapped down low. Kick out McConnell open, got to hit this. Had a good look at it, couldn't get it. All the rebound. McLean ties her up. Ooh. Two free throws, the AIS. Boy, this is costly for the Perth Breakers. This, this bench has just been phenomenal for the AIS. Those three girls there. Oh, here we don't see, we see the replay there. Three young girls that have just come on have just done a tremendous job. I know, it's a Smith, long, Hoare, and a long and bow to draw, but the Chicago Bulls back in their championship against Portland when they won. It was, they did it, they were down in one game very much in a big fashion. Phil Jackson sat Michael Jordan on the bench. He wasn't in foul trouble like Lauren Jackson is. And the bench players got Chicago back in the game. Then the Stars came on for the closing three minutes and closed the game out. It's reeking of that here this afternoon. Reeking. <laughs> it's nice of you to compare us to the Chicago Bulls. I was waiting for, now how's he going to, what the comparison with the Chicago Bulls is going to well, be? Well, Lauren Jackson is a superstar in this league, like Jordan in the yeah. NBA. McConnell acrobatically oh. knocked it away from Cox in the end. It will stay with the AAS. I haven't, Gina Stevens hasn't seen much of the ball. Lauren Jackson's got a bit to say on the bench there. But Gina Stevens has got to get the ball in her hands again. Well, Tully Bevilacqua has just signalled to come back in, so I think we'll see her make sure that Gina does see the ball. Smith, that was unlikely. McLean almost fouled. She'll slow it down. The AIS have four fouls, while Perth have nine. You see the time remaining. Go, hey, Smith. A nervous buzz around the arena here on campus at the AIS. Whittle oh, inside Whittle. the hook, couldn't get it. For the rebound. They've just done great work on the defensive board as AIS. Perth's offensive's dried up. Veal got a good look. Good fake. Should score. Doesn't. And Stevens did well. Jenny Whittle cherry picking. She's got it now against Veal. Should go over the top. Does. Oh, oh well, that doesn't drop. Right. Cox. Foul. Count it. But Cox on the job. There we go. Rahani Cox and Susie Vakovic, yeah. Michelle Tim's two player of the week. <laughs> back to five points. Substitutions. Taylor and Globitz back in as we see the contact again. Vakovic will sit down for the AIS. McLean out for Perth. You know, Perth had to make sure they're not... Don't let the missed shots worry them. Keep going at it. They're shooting 33% to 52. That was only a bonus free throw. Everyone was just about asleep. Tammy Hall, fortunately, at the last moment, went for the rebound. Oh, players, wake up. <laughs> Five points, the difference, ten minutes to go. Good deal. Poor travel. It's a bit of a chance here for Perth to, to sort of bridge this gap even more, though you'd think that they were a lot further away than 61 to 56, the way the, the game's been going. I mean, AI look like they should be about 15 up. Yeah, it's but, definitely been a real grind out there. But Bakovic and Lauren Jackson off the floor at once at the moment. This is an opportunity for Perth. Let's get it inside, they say, to Jenny Whittle against Tammy Hall. Yeah, that absolutely. Oh. Should have scored, really. She's got to score those. She does. Yeah, absolutely. She's, she can't worry about the foul. She's just got to go up strong with the basket and put it in. At the other end, Smither and hits. Oh, oh, oh my God. What a great shot. Points off the bench. A factor here. I mean, they've extended the lead. They haven't held their own, they've extended it. They're out by eight. Jen's like, move, somebody. She's got Keep to get up. Whittle missed again. She is now five of 13 from the field. Field goes all the way. Kick out, Globitz. This is for another three. Couldn't get it. And Stevens draws a foul from Taylor. That's a good, consistent call by the officials. Over the back is over the back. Timeout on the floor called by Murray Tresseter and the Perth Breakers as we see the replay again. We'll take you down to Bill Brown shortly in his timeout. There is the contact Taylor over the top of Gina Stevens. Let's listen in to Bill Brown, the coach of the AIS. Defensively, we're, we're pretty, well, pretty well on track now. 
is that we, we, we're getting to the shooters in the perimeter, we're staying on the floor, we're keeping out of foul trouble. So we're doing an excellent job. We're digging in to help out Tammy on, on Whittle, which is, which is good, how we wanted to do. Again, when she looks, 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 then she's going to go to work, we want them to kick it back outside. Take our chances on the outside shot, OK? But we can close out short and get a hand up on that. But the running game's good job. Now, we get, we get come up with stops here, get it to Verley or D. we want to run it. Now, if nothing's on, we're in four games. Tammy, you're a perimeter. All right, Penny, you're inside. We went Phil Brown talking to his stand. team. Let's go down to Simone Bertel, who has another celebrity with her. Well, I'm here with Simone Bertel, who's here with uh, Michael Clem. It's a bit noisy to hear down here, but Michael, first off, congratulations. I understand you were named the uh, AIS Athlete of the Year. Yeah, thank you. It was a fantastic recognition among the peers. So. Now, we saw your basketballing skills at halftime. Tell us a little bit about them. Um, a lot worse than most of them, luckily. So. But, um, yeah, it was good to get out there and uh, have, a, have a bit of a shoot with the rest of the guys. And the girls are ahead at the moment. Plenty of vocal support coming from this area. Yeah, definitely. It's good to come out here and support the girls. And, you know, obviously it's a big game for them, so we want to make sure they get over the line. All right. Thanks, Michael, and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Michael Quim with Simone Thurtell. As you saw while that was happening, Who was Rahani it? Who Cox was it, Clint? It was Rahani is now Cox. up to 11 points at 50% shooting with five rebounds. Stephen, 17, Whittle, 14 for Perth. Big three-point play here. Didn't get it. Got to make their free throws. They've missed several in the second half. They were 11 of 12 early. They're now 15 of 19. You know, it's really funny. You can feel the emotion in the stadium really changing to like a, a winning. It's as though the crowd are feeling like AIS are going to win this game. There's still plenty of time and it's only six points. Almost a steal from Globitz. McConnell trying to kick it out for Stevens. They will reset. Jackson still on the bench with four fouls. Shot clock at 15. Cox being guarded by Taylor. McConnell from a meter beyond the arc. Yes! The real McConnell makes it a three-point game. This is her home court too. She played here for many years. Oh, it hasn't been a home court for a long time. Oh, Not when Tiger oh, was. <laughs> Paul Globitz kicked away. Shot clock reset. AIS ball. Just when you think the AIS are getting a lead, they've got the game under control. Here they come, just reeling them back in. Perth at them again and again. And here we see two big subs. What a fantastic effort by Smitherman and Hall. Yep. Super effort. New in comes Jackson. And Clinton and I had no idea who was walking alongside us. Susie Bankovic. Here Bankovic. come the cavalry. Yeah. Here come the cavalry, all right. Veal now inside. Taylor gets good D help provided by Cox. Taylor. It was a fraction late. Taylor scores. AIS searching for their first ever national championship. They've been in the league. The only original team of the WNBL since it started in 1981. Hopefully McConnell will let fly with a couple more threes. That'd be nice. She has the basketball. Here we go. Whittle against Jackson. Jackson can oh, just stand there. It was just a beautiful textbook move by Jenny Whittle. Margin back to three. Jackson clearly didn't want to concede a fifth foul. Batkovich. Oh, Rahani Cox, Cox the steal. She's got three to beat. On the way, she's playing their good odds, but she'll <laughs> slow it down. Four. A basket to cut it back to one or perhaps tie. You see it, seven minutes to play. Cox on the pull up. Oh, no, she out the corner. Shot clock at 10. Whittle now being guarded by Batkovich. Oh, come along. Oh, Ladies five. and gentlemen. And girls, just when you thought it was over, just when you thought Jenny Whittle could not drag herself out of the hole, she's made two clutch baskets. Absolutely sensational play by Whittle. We've seen her miss a couple of easy, what we think are easy baskets. And then those two hook shots, just brilliant. One point the difference. Perth haven't led since it was nine to six. Shot clock at eight. Globus, Taylor, someone has to be creative. Shot clock at four and three and two. Taylor, Taylor gets it up, couldn't get it. Ball knocked oh, away, lucky. nearly found number five yep. on Jackson. Get at the, the other end, Stevens, this for the lead. Oh. Couldn't get it, Taylor the rebound. No foul, Tally Bevilacqua. Oh, jump oh. it up. Oh, dear me, dear me. That was very risky from Tully. Could there be risky. any more drama Woo. in a grand final? We've got a timeout from Phil Brown. Ball game. 66, 65. Look at this, Tully. If she gets a foul here, she's out of the game. Ooh, ooh. Oh, she's cool. That's she's fine. just touching the ball, saying, "Can we jump it up, Rip? Let's go down to Phil Brown. We're in the huddle. 
we want to we want to get the screening action going okay unless there's something good there then we want to go away susan lies and bring the other girl to the ball there okay we need more action from you three on the perimeter it's too much standing okay so second touch you've got to be looking to penetrate they're in the bonus they're in the bonus so we've got to be prepared to go at them now that may be off throw it inside to susan Loz, or it might be second touch perimeter girls putting the ball on the floor draw a block and foul will go to the foul line so we need to take shots within the context. Hey, we're in front. We'll stay in front. It's not a problem. Now, we need everyone on the boards. No second shots, no three-point plays. So, Phil Brown there, the coach of the AIS. Hope you're enjoying our special ABC Sport presentation of the WNBL Grand Final. Quinton Gravis along with Leanne Grantham and Michelle Timms with you. What about the nerves, <laughs> ladies, at the moment? It's remarkable, isn't it? It's just been an excellent game. I mean, Batgirl, she's been fantastic. I think she's got a new nickname now. It's Batgirl. <laughs> she's been phenomenal. Really picked up with Jackson being in foul trouble. Jump ball, Bevilacqua against Taylor. The odds Bat say Girl. Taylor. No, 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 no. <laughs> Taylor flicks it to the Batgirl. <laughs> there you go. AIS with a one-point lead with six minutes to go. Their first ever national championship beckoning. Perth of 1-1. One, one. We Hope. haven't seen the end of Jackson yet either, just quietly. Badjevic kick out, Veal steps inside. Taylor. Taylor. Short, yes, no, she gets the roll. Great, pe great penetration by Veal, but hasn't Penny Taylor stepped up as well? She was fairly quiet in the first half, but she certainly come out to the fore in this second half, as you said. And she's guarding the other player that could make a difference, Gina Stevens. She's been a little bit quiet just of late. She's got to start penetrating again. Surely Murray Tresser, uh, sorry, Clint, surely he's said to Cox, get the ball, take it on, take Jackson on. They should clear out for her, they Absolutely. don't. Absolutely. Shot clock at five, four. McConnell goes Ooh. baseline, draws a foul on Globitz. Gee, that's tough. I thought she played pretty good defense then. Ouch. Baseline ball for the replay. breakers. Here it is again. Globitz leaning in. Yeah, that's a blocking foul. Too. Yeah, well, we're, we're lucky. lucky. We've got slow motion replay, yeah. guys. It is team foul number eight on the AIS. Two free throws for Narelle McConnell to take you through the leading scorers. For AIS, Badkovic 14, Jackson and Taylor 13. Whittle with 18. Stevens 17, McConnell now 12, Cox 11 for Perth. It's a two-point game. It's a one-point game. Reeling him back in once again. It's incredible because AIS are playing a little bit like there's only a couple of minutes left to play, but there's still a long while in this game. Five minutes still left on the clock. That was a nice no call there. Good officiating yeah, from yeah, Sharon Arnold, so. no question of that. Jack uh, Jackson posting up, Matkovic in the vicinity, the lob pass, oh. Cox couldn't control it. She lands in the lap of Brian Curl, the coach of the Brisbane board, sitting alongside Herb McEachin, watching the WNBL Grand Final. This is a huge possession here. It is. Shot clock did not reset. It's at 15. Jackson, Taylor, Batkovic against Cox. She wants the ball. Taylor to Jackson, quiet since early on. Shot clock down to six. Jackson knocked away by Whittle. Stevens gets it. Oh, she wow. loses it. She gets it again. Oh, sensational. Oh, great play. Terrific so play. <laughs> Three on two. McConnell, this for the lead. Oh. Couldn't get it. Bevilacqua pushed oh, down. Oh, She's out of the game. Fire. The captain of Perth will watch the remaining four and a half minutes agonisingly from the sidelines. Well, I hope Narelle McConnell gets the girls together right now and decides to take on the leadership role. Because that's what Tully really provides that. I mean, she's captain, but she does it all for the team. A big call. Breakers go from potentially having the ball to take the lead to conceding two free throws. What a call. Kristen Veal at the line for two pressure free throws. Murray Tresseter taking his 30 seconds to bring Melissa McClure into the game. McConnell's got him in a huddle now, Timsey. Just as you asked for. They've really got to start, like, pumping each other up. There's not yeah, enough I mean, hype out there yeah, from Perth. I mean, every one of them is a, a leader in their own right, so they can all step up and take over that leadership role. But especially from the point guard, but, you know, Morrell pops into the point now. She's got to make sure they get through the offense and get the ball into the right people's hands. Well, Perth get a break. Four and a half to play. AIS by two. There she's wide We're open. Wide open. We're tied. She gets the roll. <laughs> Perth level it away for the first time in the second half. They haven't led since early in the first. Jackson. Yes! I said you haven't had the end of her yet. Little 
just got to go straight back at her now. Jackson with 15, AIS by two. In actual fact, Coach Phil Brown saying, telling Bakovic to get on Whittle. Here not it Jackson. is. Whittle kicks it out. McClure, oh, Stevens oh. almost oh. found a couple of times. Oh, oh she's oh. unbelievable. Jenny Stevens. Put that on the line, Wills. And not at 10. Unbelievable move. Veal inside at the other end. Taylor, Taylor this is for three. Oh. Then high scoring. Three and a half minutes to play. Can they reel him back in this possession? Stevens. I like Stevens with the ball, but I like Whittle with it too. She's got it now. She might be double teamed. Tough shot. Jenny oh, Whittle couldn't get it. And now the AIS could open up a handy cushion. Oh, good pressure. Good pressure. Got to get it over halfway. Oh, they do it just in time. Veal has Globe. It's oh. going. She throws it away. She right leads up. the league in turnovers. Kristen Veal, that was a costly one. An assist, one. though. That was, uh, that was the right idea. Just uh, misread it a little bit. Perth down by three. Listen to this crowd. What a great grand final. One for the archives, no doubt. Inside of three minutes. I'm sure Terry Winters from Link Telecommunications would be very, very happy with this game. Oh, offensive foul! Oh, my goodness! It's a huge call. Cox has got to show composure. Good job. Good job, Rahani Cox. She didn't like the call, but she didn't argue about it. Extremely tough call. And Almost a no call. Full credit, Penny Taylor, yeah, if you get some contact definitely. to the flop. Yep. Well, I'll be trying to do the same down this end. Three points. The AIS lead. Jackson. Coming alive. Blocked from oh, behind by block. Riddle. They're a long time in the key. Bakovic got Bakovic. it. Sixteen points. Five points is our lead. There's the time remaining. The grand final of 99, the last of the century. There's a mismatch down there. They want to get it to Stevens, but Veal's playing very good D. McConnell oh, to the From the tree! Oh, it went too low. <laughs> what a huge basket. She's got 16, margin back to two. Jackson's lit up as well. She's ready to come and play. The captain, Globitz. Oh. Did it need to be out there on the one day? The crowd calling for some defence here. Whittle against Batkovic. McClure driving on Jackson. Stevens, this is for two. Oh, that's leg power. Couldn't get it. Jackson the rebound. A Great score rebound. here will make it very tough for Perth. Field. Batkovic, they can slow it down. Jackson to be the hero. No. Oh, oh dear. They want to work the clock down here. Inside of 90 seconds left. Live around Australia, the grand final on ABC Sport. Bankovic inside. Oh! What a game she's had. Smile on her face. Boy, that just about seals it. Quick call, Michelle. Do you want threes or not? We'll talk about it in a moment. Murray Tresseter has called a timeout. We'll go to Murray Tresseter and then talk about whether or not you would like Perth to take threes or twos here. Murray may well answer it during this timeout. Let's listen in. OK, everybody, listen. Listen. We want to go to a three with Jenny at the post. George, you're in the three spot, poo. So it ends up being... Ends up being a two-man game with you two guys. And Jenny, you can go down low any time you want. You can also look to your three off it. If they sag in, if they sag in, we have two guys looking for that three there, OK? Now, then we'll be in a situation where we need to play some good honesty. If we score, we need to play some good honesty. Are you going to have a quick shot here, Mars? Yes, yeah, off, off the three. So off, off the three, it's fine. Now, then if we need to foul, we want to foul Taylor early, OK? If we score, if we score, we don't need to foul, OK? If we don't score, then we do need to foul. So that's the word from Murray Tresseter, coach of the Breakers, Clement Gladys, Leanne Grantham and Michelle Timms with you. Three is his offence. He doesn't necessarily want a three. Is that the way you read that? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a very smart play too. They don't need a three. There's still a minute 17, so there's a lot of possession left in this game. 
What a tense moment here. If the Breakers are going to win the championship, they must score on this drive. And they want to get a quick shot. Too much time's ticking off the clock here. There's a three here. Oh, McConnell wide That's open for two. Oh. Short. Feel the rebound. Got a foul. That could be enough. There's the foul. Kristen Veal off to the line to shoot two on the season. She is a 69% free throw shooter. Today, she is one of two. You know, that was a good shot. I mean, it needed to be taken. And that's the girl. You want to take a three-point shot. The teams huddle up. Now Kristen Veal with a look of determination in her eye. A wonderful season. She has had her third in the WNBL. That injury early on played 17 of their 21 regular season matches. And now two very big free throws to come. Boy, the interim season for the WNBL has just been wonderful for the development of the AIS. Couldn't afford to miss this. 104 left. Seven point split. It's a bit of a nice buffer now that seven point instead of six, that's for sure. There is still time for Perth. Need to yep. score here. One minute to go. Anything? McCaw loitering at the top of the key. Stevens oh, draws yes, a foul. She will shoot two. You see the time remaining 54.55.9. Smart play. They needed a basket. Doesn't matter whether it's a three or a two because it's seven point difference. But uh, it would have been nice if Gina had obviously made that bucket. So then she's going to the line for, for three points instead of just the two. Here's the play again. You see Stevens working against Veal. Little pump fake draws the contact. She's a pretty good shooter, Gina Stevens, from the charity stripe. 78% on the season. If she makes them both here, it's back to a five-point game. So Perth gained one point on that last exchange. Now the D. Clock doesn't start to the ball. Oh, they almost the could have had a steal. Oh, again, they could have had a steal. Oh. Cox called for the foul. Veal goes down. It was so close to being a steal. And now Kristen Veal has to go to the charity stripe again. Good news for Perth. They only burn two seconds. Yeah. Good news for Perth. Maybe not so good news for Veal. Although she looks OK. It doesn't look like... Here it is again, very close to getting Jeez, the steal. Very yeah, close. Very close. A bit unlucky. But you know what? Um, Cox didn't even... She didn't even Clinch. look yep. twice no. at the foul being called. Terrific. So, I mean, obviously it was a foul. Now Kristen Veal at the line again. Oh, oh dear. That's not typical AIS. Because now if she makes this, it's only two threes the difference. But boy, does she need this one. Big rebound coming up. 76. Need to get into play. Smart play there by Narelle McConnell. Not touching the ball. Yep. Because the clock doesn't start till that player touches it. Two threes to force another overtime session. McCaw oh, from this range. Would be huge. Big couldn't get it. Oh, Cox Coxie. the rebound. Foul. No oh, six. Oh, 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 Big call. A championship deciding call. <laughs> now they've got to get oh, up and play oh, some D. Dear me. Side ball, Total the basket was way. Here, here it is it again. Up. Hard to tell whether she moved the feet. Uh, oh, boy. What you call it? Now Veal is fouled by <laughs> Cox. Kristen Veal back at the line. Cox will be found out of the game there with 13 points and eight rebounds. What a performance. Rahani Cox. Yeah. A big call that last travel. Here's the foul. Had she made that, they're four down. What a great game she has had. You know, a little bit inconsistent throughout the season. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get from her when she steps out in the court, but tonight she came with it and, and played tremendously well for the Perth Breakers. Kristen Veal, is the arm getting tense now? Michelle, is no, the ring stepping stop bumping back? bumping me, for goodness sakes. You know, <laughs> bumping me, I've never seen someone get so excited. <laughs> that should be it. Hey, Clinton, you know better than that. It should be all over. <laughs> Thank God you don't play with me. <laughs> Quickly, you need a three. Yeah, very quickly, taking a little bit too long. Oh, actually, anything's Got to set anything's someone good. off a of screen. Stevens, a Stevens. She's got it now. This is big. That's huge. Couldn't get it. Jackson. Stolen. McClure, oh, kick nice out. Dump. McConnell. On See, line. Got it. Back to five. Got to get a steal here. here they is. do. No, they don't. Oh. And Kristen Veal has got the tent set up at the free throw line. She's camping there. She's going back. Oh, what? This game just will not end. Well, it's not over yet. It's only three points the difference. Five. Five points Five. the difference. That's right. about to be six or seven, though. But still, yeah. if she uh, if she makes only one of these, it's only two three pointers. If she makes two, then it makes it a little bit more difficult because they need three shots. Yep. Kristen Veal now rolls it home. 
girls are excited. Already getting ready to jump up and down. It's going to be That's the rebound. Another foul from McConnell. Smart play. You have to foul straight away. Bench is a little bit excited down there. It's a huge rebound yep. by Taylor, though. And, did, and she came up with that back-breaking three-pointer to break the yep. tie, which I think when we look back at it will be the play that ended this one. It was 71 all after Stephen's drive. Taylor hit the three, and AIS never trailed. Clinton, the play was Cox's travel. That was still down four. We'll follow the girls out in a few seconds. They're going to run onto the court and embrace their teammates. The AIS. In 18 seasons, are about to win their first ever championship. Take it up, Narelle. Throw it up, mate. McConnell has been superb, no question. Whittle. McLean. McLean from range. Couldn't get it. Whittle. Jackson. They'll foul it. No. No, there's no need to foul. Let it go. No. Now there's a foul. Four seconds to go. Phil Brown will clear the bench. Oh. Tanya Heritage will come in for the first time. Alison O'Dwyer will come in for the first time. What great did he take out? <laughs> With four seconds left to play. Reminds me once when uh, Carrie Graff went on the court. It wasn't a final. She went off by 0.2 of a second. <laughs> you wouldn't want to take your track pants off, would you? Oh, neither, she did it. <laughs> neither did she. And she was, it was up here and the AIS crowd just gave it to oh. her too. What <laughs> shooting by Veal. It'll be tears of joy in a moment. Their last game together will end in the best possible fashion. Veal missed it. Taylor. She deliberately to did. Veal. Deliberate Heritage miss. to finish. The dream season is complete. The Arrows have won their first ever national championship. A, a fantastic effort too. After 18 seasons in the competition, they win for the first time ever. In their last game together. <laughs> Eight of them to move on. The coach of the year, Phil Brown, embraces his coaching staff. What a moment for these girls. Yeah, absolutely, and just an incredible accomplishment. A bunch of 17 year old girls winning the national title. What, a, what a, an unbelievably emotional moment, too, for them. Last game, as you said, Quinn, the emotions just running so high. They were the minor premiers. They boast the MVP, the coach of the year. They won the last nine games of the season. And what a great way to finish in front of their home fans. And you know, they showed such composure throughout the game. Let's go down. Simone Fertel is down at courtside. We'll get to her in a moment. Yes, the girls are number one. Everything to tell the story. That looks fantastic. Let's go down to the celebrations. Barry Trissett can still smile. His team had a great season. Simone Fertel now with Lauren Jackson and courtside Simone. Lauren Jackson, fantastic. The atmosphere, the huddle. How do you feel? <laughs> fantastic. I'm a great guy. Um, this girl is a great. You know, we made the best of what we had. And we were the best, so yeah. It was a tough game. You came out well off. Offensively in the first half and that second half, you pulled in some big rebounds. Um, yeah, I didn't do that well offensively in the second half. But, you know, I'm so happy with the way we played and we won. And I'm just happy about that. I had people to make up for me and we, we played so well. It's obviously a very emotional time for you. The eight of you, the last time you're going to play together. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, <laughs> we're going to make the most of tonight, let me tell you. <laughs> and, Lauren, what about... Uh, Phil Brown, new coach. He's obviously been instrumental in your career. He's fantastic. I love him. I love everyone. <laughs> Congratulations, Lauren, oh, and have be. a great night <laughs> celebrating. Yeah, we'll, talk over the stats. we'll talk to Phil Brown now. That's great. Phil, come on in. A fantastic win. <laughs> you were named during the uh, the week the coach of the season. This must top it, does it, or is it all 
just a great way to end off. Oh, this this more than tops. This is what it's all about, and uh, it's nice to get individual awards, but you don't do that to give her a coach of the year unless you get a great team. And yeah, you know, they're just a wonderful group of girls, and uh, this is what it was all about. This is the one we wanted to get. Tell me about you've had these girls, you've taken them from young uh, trainees. Now here they are winning the WNBL championship. Reflect on some of those memories. Well, it's been a long time. You know, it's been two two and a quarter years we've been together, and it's you know it's just so satisfying to have a group of young kids that want to. You know, live the dream. You know, the dream was we, we felt we, were, we, we had the talent and the commitment necessary to, to, to give it a real shot. And I think it's just a you know a great thing for the kids to, to go through with it and, and get it done. It's just a wonderful moment. Fantastic occasion, but also a sad one. Most of this team now moving on. Yeah, it is a sad day. I, I don't think that's sunk in yet, but it's, it was our last game together. But, you know, I think it, what, a, what a better way to finish. Uh, you know, they created history. Unbelievable group of, group of young girls, average age of 17 and a half years of age. What could more could you ask for? Great way to finish, uh, you know, the season. Phil Brown, congratulations. Have a great night celebrating. Kristen Veal. You were the point scoring machine there in the end, weren't you? Yeah, 50%. <laughs> and tell me, how are you feeling at the moment? Um, I'm not quite sure yet, but I think the word is ecstatic. What about the game? How did you find it? it looked very tough out there. It was very much like the semi-final where we had to work really hard for our points. Um, so did Perth, and it was really close to the end. We didn't have the blowout, but God, it was good. You had great crowd support here. We can hear them cheering for you. That must have brought you home as well. It was great. Just look at them. They're, they're not just sitting there either. either. They're noisy and they're up and they're really going for us. So it was great. Kristen Beale, congratulations. We'll throw back now to Clinton Grivers. Well, actually, that'll be a bit difficult because he's uh, not with he's, us yeah, up here. He's not at the moment. He's down. He's going to actually uh, host the presentation. But what a sight, Michelle. Isn't that fantastic? I know we talked about the players coming off the bench, but, you know, that, that, what a wonderful sight. Anton Grivers is now with us, so we'll move down to the presentations on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree, one of the great WNBL Wing Cup Grand Finals that we witnessed today. We have to be quick for our national audience. Would you please welcome the Chief Executive Officer of Link Telecommunications, the major sponsor of the WNBL, Mr Terry Winters, to make the trophy presentation to the AIS. Thank you very much, Clinton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kate Lundy, uh, Shadow, Federal Shadow Minister for, for Sport, uh, executives of the WNBL, executives of AIS, and ladies and gentlemen, we're really delighted to uh, see the end of the season. It's been a wonderful season, two great teams, and we're very delighted to see how that every year the standard increases. Well, it certainly was the uh, it was, certainly was the AIS game tonight, and we would really like to congratulate them for a wonderful year. A team of 16 to 18 year olds have excelled throughout this season. What can I say about a team like this? Um, we've seen the season's uh, most valuable player uh, nominated last week at the uh, WNBL Awards night, Lauren Jackson. Um, <coughs> Phil Brown as the coach, was recognised as the coach of the year and they've just had a wonderful season. But uh, our sympathies go to the Perth team, to the uh, Perth Breakers. Uh, they certainly uh, have played extremely well throughout the season and uh, it was great to see them here in the final. Just before presenting the awards, I'd like to pay a tribute to the WNBL and to all of their uh, members and coaches and teams, the whole league. <coughs> they again have just contributed so much to the standard and the improving standards of this game. We're really proud to be part of the sponsorship and uh, be delighted now to present these awards. <coughs> well, what a fantastic win for the AIS. It's a wonderful, wonderful victory here for the AIS as they hold off the trophy. The crowd goes wild here. It's a good crowd here at the Institute. That final score, the AIS 88. I'm sure Phil will come out Perth well. Breakers 79. What a great year it's been.